If I lost everything, all my tech certs, all my 25 years of experience in the tech field and had to start from zero, here's exactly how I would get into a cybersecurity career fast. And I'm only going to talk about cybersecurity because there's over 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs in the world right now. But for some reason, even 3.5 million open positions, a ton of people in tech are still struggling to land their dream job. And there's a reason for that. It's not because of AI, and it's not because of companies aren't hiring. In fact, most companies are desperately seeking for good cybersecurity talent. But the reality is the majority of people have no idea how to get in front of these companies instead of just getting ignored, which is why I'm making this video. Because in my vocational school, NGT Academy, we've helped tens of thousands break into high paying IT jobs with a simple roadmap. And the craziest part was they did it all without needing a college degree. So let's get into it. Now first, let's talk about IT certifications because people assume that certifications are the currency of cyber or any IT job. And if you get the right certs, you'll be able to get a job. A lot of people think CompTIA A+, let me fix PCs and know how to troubleshoot printers and let me get that help desk job, which is actually a disaster because you don't want to be stuck on the help desk. You want to break into a intermediate or entry level admin or network engineer or cybersecurity engineer position right out the gate. For example, an entry-level position in cyber might be a cybersecurity analyst versus a help desk job. This is why certifications are important, but this is not where the actual true skills building and the competency comes in. You see, the truth is this strategy has been broken since I joined the IT career field over 25 years ago. Every year, tens of thousands of people pass their Security Plus, their Network Plus, CEH, or even their CISSP, but still can't get hired in their dream job. Not because the cert is useless, but because they never built the real world skills that companies are looking for. Let me explain. At its core, cybersecurity is the art of protecting systems from attackers. And attackers don't follow textbooks. They exploit patterns, gaps, and misconfigurations in real world systems that are live. So if you've only memorized information to pass a cert, then you'll be lost in the moment when something real happens. And that's why most hiring managers don't care about college degrees or what acronyms you've memorized. They care about how you think. And I'm not talking about IQ. I'm talking about structured systems level critical thinking because companies want to know how you would react when an alert comes in at 3 a.m. or if there's a network outage or if there's a breach and someone's attacking the network. They want to know how you can spot the difference between a false positive and a real incident. That's critical thinking and troubleshooting. So instead of asking which search should I take first, which college should I go to? The better question is, how can I think like a cybersecurity expert? And to do that, you need to start training your brain. And here's how to do it. Step one, start with what's called a mental model. A mental model is basically a map in your head that helps you understand how something works. We all have mental models for every single object or thing that we're experiencing. An example, let's say I say the word car. Your mental model will project an idea of how a car looks and how it works and how it gets you from point A to point B for transportation. In cybersecurity, you need to understand how the internet works as a system or how the network operates and how packets go from point A to point B. For example, what happens when you open up your internet browser and you visit a website like google.com? You need to understand the flow of how everything operates together like the DNS resolution, the TCP handshake, the packet moving from point A to point B, or even across the internet, and much more. And you should be able to see it and have a foundational understanding of how that packet traverses from point A to point B. And then step two is to practice if this, then that thinking. That's what great cybersecurity experts are able to solve problems with logic. They constantly ask themselves questions like, if I see X, then I should check Y or consider Z. For example, if there's a sudden spike in outbound traffic, and I'm going to check for which devices are sending that data and to where. And I'm going to also find out if it's coming from an employee workstation. And then I'm going to look for signs of malware or unauthorized access. Each if leads to a then, not just once, but in a chain. And this is what separates real world readiness training from theoretical knowledge that you might learn from college. Next is step three, 
where we'll use open source labs to reinforce ideas. And for this, you don't need expensive tools. You can use free simulation tools like Packet Tracer or platforms like TryHackMe or Blue Team Labs online, which have guided environments. But don't just follow these steps. These are just tools. Instead, pause after every instruction and ask why you're doing it and what you're even doing. That pause and reflect moment is what rewires your brain and your thinking. And this is how you truly level up with real world scenarios. And finally, the last step is to talk through the scenarios out loud. And this is really underrated. Let's break it down. Pick a topic, let's say phishing attack, and explain the full chain. How the email lands, what the user clicks on, what executes, and how it bypasses, and how do you detect it? You see, what you can narrate around these chains clearly is showing a level of understanding most beginners never reach. And this is how you become a cybersecurity expert. By gaining an understanding because simple memorization simply fades, but understanding compounds and is actually useful for any job. Now, once you get the basics down, something weird happens. You're going to feel overwhelmed because cybersecurity or IT is a huge field and the amount of things you can learn might seem endless, but don't let that discourage you. You may hear a lot of new terms like SOC, Pin testing, GRC, DFIR, threat hunting, red team, blue team, cloud, IoT, and suddenly you're trying to drink from a fire hose. I've been there and done that. And it's not just confusing, it's paralyzing because most likely you won't even know where to start, or what to learn, or what tools to focus on, and what realistic first job even looks like. So you freeze and maybe you self-doubt. Maybe you try to learn a little bit of everything. And ironically, that just slows you down and you become overwhelmed. But the truth is you shouldn't learn everything because businesses want specialists, not generalists. This is why you simply need to choose one path and learn it deeply enough so you can be a big value to any IT team. And it doesn't have to be your forever path but gives you clarity, confidence, and a way to filter out the noise and get your foot in the door with confidence and competence. When you know which role you're aiming for, you'll be learning much faster and more effective. For example, if I knew I wanted to be a penetration tester in a cybersecurity team, that's very crystal clear. You'll know exactly then what skills to practice, which certs to actually matter for that job, and which communities and mentors that you want to follow. So let's break down the three clear entry points to break into a cybersecurity career field. The first one is a SOC analyst, and this stands for Security Operations Center. If you're analytical and you enjoy puzzles or investigating, start here. This role is about monitoring security tools, identifying threats before it even happens, and escalating alerts as they come in. To get started, you'll want to focus your learning on SIM tools like Splunk, Waza, open source, network fundamentals, normal versus abnormal traffic, using packet tracer, and using different log analysis tools, window event logs, sys monitoring, or even firewall logs, understanding alert triages. You see, SOC analysts are very high in demand and often work multiple shifts because it's 24-7 operation center. So companies are hiring aggressively as they beef up their cybersecurity practices. And according to talent.com, entry-level positions start at 73000 per year, while most experienced workers can earn 135,000 and even more. With this type of role, there's also no programming to learn, no coding required, just system knowledge, alert handling, and fast judgment. Next is entry point number two, a network security engineer. With network engineering as your foundation, you've got networking basics, IP addressing, subnetting, uh, TCP IP, the whole OSI model as a foundation. And then from there, you can dive into the security side where you can start managing firewalls, intrusion detection systems, uh, mitigating threats, attacks, vulnerabilities, and protecting the network from hackers or unwanted guests. This is a field that's 
going to be ever rising. And you can go work for big companies like Palo Alto Networks or Cisco Systems, uh, for example. And this is a popular path and it gets well paid. The average salary in network security is 125,000 per year with top earners making way over 167,000. Now the third entry point that's pretty easy to break in is penetration testing. So if you're curious, creative, love breaking things, this path is for you. Penetration testers simulate attacks to find vulnerabilities. And a lot of your learning will start with networking. And then as you advance, you'll move into learning about exploitation tools like Meta Exploit or Burp Suite or bug bounty platforms to practice like Hack the Box. Now, whichever path you choose, as soon as you choose it, your learning becomes more directional and a lot easier and a lot less overwhelming. You know which tools to practice, which labs to complete, and what kind of problems you want to solve. But even with the right path and the right skills, there's one final piece most people miss that holds them back from actually getting higher. Let's say you've chosen your path. You've studied hard, practiced on labs, maybe even built a home lab. Now you have your certs and you're starting to apply for jobs but getting zero responses, no interviews. Or you get to the interview and it's an AI recruiter or the HR department and it just falls flat. Now, this is where most people start panicking. They think, maybe I need another cert. Maybe I need a degree. Look, if you have the basic foundation and you have capstone projects under your belt, you probably don't need more credentials. You need something else, something that shows you can do the work before you're hired to do it. Because hiring managers don't look at what you've learned. They look for proof. And if you can't show that, they move on. So you need proof. And here's how to build that proof even if you've never worked a day in the field. First, you want to create a lab-based portfolio of IT projects that you can showcase, that you can talk through. But don't just complete labs and document them. Write them up for what you did, why it mattered, what you learned, and maybe even customize that project towards that company's design and that company's value. For example, you could write or showcase a project for a credit union or for an insurance company and doing the research is going to help you customize your portfolio so they can really resonate with them. And how about if you wrote also a blog article or create even a YouTube video to walk through some of your projects or to walk through your home lab? Because then when companies ask for experience, you can show them instead of just talking about key certs or things on your resume because no one else does this. So even a few write-ups can separate you from 90% of the other applicants. And this is one of the key secrets why NGT Academy has such a high success rate in putting people and launching their IT careers. Next, start publishing this content on LinkedIn. Let's say you figured out how to detect a PowerShell script using Event Viewer for a niche vertical use case. Now you could also run, let's say, a packet capture and expose a rogue device on your home network. Like share all of that. Use it to demonstrate how you can critically think and what tools that you're using so the employer can see that you're an engineer that can be taught, can be learning new things, and you can adapt to that environment. Then the third step is to build a home lab and share those screenshots. And you could also put them and showcase in them in like a PowerPoint presentation. Now, set up a simple virtual lab using VirtualBox, VMware, or Proxmox. Now, install a Kali Linux, set up a Windows virtual machine, and then start using tools like Security Onion, Zeek, PFSense, and so many more. Then walk people through it. How did you set it up? What attacks did you simulate? And what were the indicators? This can showcase real powerful skills to set yourself apart from any other applicants. Now, even if it's messy, even if it's basic, show the drive. Prove that you're not just reading about cybersecurity, you're actually doing it and living it. And in the hiring world, this kind of proof makes you memorable. It gives hiring managers something to see, not just assume, because the goal isn't to say, I know this. The goal is to show, here's what I built, here's how I think, and here's what kind of analyst I am. So here's a sequence to get into tech. Skills first, projects second, and certs are last. But be careful, because not all certifications are created equal. 
In fact, the certification industry is booming because fear sells. They tell you, you'll never get a job without this cert, or this is the one that hiring managers care about. So people stack certifications thinking that more is better, when the reality is projects are better. And these projects that you can talk through is going to help you get the job. You see, the certs that matter depend entirely on the target role. Even then, they only open up doors. They don't walk you through them. They don't get you hired. What hiring managers actually look for is the ability to think, prove your skills, and just enough certifications that you're serious. That's it. This is how you approach certifications strategically not emotionally. Only get a certification if it checks one of these boxes. It's explicitly requesting the job listings that you're targeting. It helps you break through HR filters like the CompTIA Security Plus, or it deepens your knowledge in the specific field you've chosen like GRC, SOC, or pen testing. If it doesn't do one of these three, then skip it. When you're ready for certifications, you're going to start with ones that build your technical base. For example, you can get started with the CompTIA Network Plus. This certification will help build a rock solid networking foundation. It'll help you understand how data moves throughout the network, how devices connect, and what protocols do they use to talk to one another. The next one, after that would be the CompTIA Security Plus. And in this course, you'll learn about access control, vulnerabilities, basic cryptography, and also risk handling. Or you can go with the CYSA Plus, or you can go with the EJPT or Cisco CCNA Cyber Ops. These go deeper into detection, response, and also threat behavior. But for pin testing, I recommend the EJPT. These are the big three that will set you up for the most entry-level cybersecurity roles and teach you the exact concept that SOX and blue teams and red teams use daily. But don't delay job hunting while waiting for these certs. Certs are a tool, remember that, not a requirement. If you build proof in a portfolio of cybersecurity projects, you can explain how attacks work, how to detect them, and how to think through risk. You're already ahead of the pack. Because the fact is, the best candidates don't have the most certifications. They have the clearest focus. They know their path, they built practical skills, and they've learned how to demonstrate it. And if you can do that, even one cert is enough. Which leads us to the final idea. Because the biggest excuse people carry is this. But I don't have any experience. And that miss stops more careers than any other that I've ever seen. So... Let's kill that right now. In cybersecurity, you don't need experience when you can build it. You need evidence of ability. Hiring managers are looking for potential, pattern recognition, and proof that you get it. So how do you create that kind of credibility with no formal experience? You build a strong portfolio of projects. Your portfolio should show your thinking. You could use a PowerPoint slide to showcase or a notion page to create and include things like real world walkthroughs, threats, investigated use cases, simulated incident reports, showcasing your ability to use tools like Splunk or Wireshark, and to be able to script out automated simple security tasks or writing big blog posts and explaining on different topics across cyber that you're super interested in. Even if you've never had a cybersecurity job, these projects prove you're learning the right way and they make interviews 10x easier because now you have stories to tell. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, this all makes sense, but I still don't know which cybersecurity path is right for me, then take our free quiz. It's a three minute assessment that shows you exactly which high paying tech path actually fits based on your personality, your lifestyle goals, your passion and interest, and your current skill level. That way you don't waste years chasing the wrong thing or end up competing with hundreds of laid off seniors from the same job. Tap the link below your screen or in the description. It's 100% free. So what are you waiting for? You'll walk away with a clear IT blueprint and the next steps that you need to take to launch your cybersecurity career today. My name is Terry Kim. Please hit the like button if you really enjoyed this video and follow us for more. And we hope to see you in the next training video.